choosing a head type for a mechanical seal. The most common American head types are Ukraine Type 1, U.S. Seal calls it a Type E. Ukraine Type 2, U.S. Seal calls it a Type D. Ukraine Type 21, U.S. Seal calls it a Type C. And Ukraine Type 6A, U.S. Seal calls it a Type B. The advantages of them, the Type 1 has a long working length and a narrow cross section. It'll fit into very narrow stuffing boxes as long as there's enough length in it. The Type 2 has a very short working length. The Type 21 has a short working length, generally about the same as your Type 2, and it will take up a little less space than this. It's become the most universal seal. This seal head type is special. The shaft passes through it. It doesn't rotate with the shaft. It stays inside of a pocket, inside the pump cavity or up against the impeller. Why one of these rather than the other? These two types are a little more expensive generally than this type. The elastomer that's inside this bellows is shaped with an extra convolution in here, which gives it a little bit uh, longer uh, extension as the carbon wears. You can identify materials in a mechanical seal by looking at what you have and just identifying it that way. The other way to go through choosing your materials is by the function. What are you pumping? What temperatures are you operating at? Has the materials you've been using been lasting adequately or are they failing too early and you want to upgrade? Let's go through identifying basic materials. If it's white, it's going to be ceramic. One of the most common seal materials, it's inexpensive, it's hard, you can't scratch it very easily, and uh, it's corrosion resistant. Another common material is nigh resist. This here is actually a high nickel content cast iron. It's a little harder than stainless, although quite soft compared to a ceramic. Another common material is silicon carbide. You'll see this both in seats and you will see it in as a rotary face material. It is light like ceramic, weighs about the same, extremely hard, it's as hard as tungsten carbide, and it does not thermal shock, which means breaking when you have a quick change in temperature, which can happen with ceramics. Last material is tungsten carbide. It looks like steel, it is very heavy. You see it in seats, you also see it being used as the rotary element. Carbon is the most common face material that is used. It's light like ceramic. It's black as opposed to silicon carbide, which is a dark gray. It's fairly soft. Uh, it will sometimes pick up uh, particles inside of it, which then will tend to wear against the uh, seat and destroy the seat. But it is inexpensive. It's corrosion resistant, it can take high temperatures, it's thermally stable, it's the most common uh, uh, rotary uh, element that's used. The next thing is the rubber that you're using, or elastomer. They're almost all black. You can't tell by looking at them what they are. Uh, the most common ones are Buna N, or nitrile, EPR, or ethylene propylene, and Viton or fluorocarbon. Uh, you really need to choose your rubber material based on what your, uh, what your uh, media is that you're pumping. The um, charts are available for looking at it that way. Buna N is the most common because it'll do water, it'll do oils, it'll take you up to about 180 degrees uh, without any serious uh, problems at all. Your Viton will take you into higher temperatures 
Uh, it'll actually go up to about 400 degrees. It'll handle many chemicals. It can handle hot water. Um, the uh, EPR material uh, is pretty specifically used for uh, high temperature water. It'll go up to 250, 275 degrees. Uh, it's also used where you have certain uh, uh, chemicals like propylene glycol. It's the preferred material for propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is the new green uh, uh, antifreeze. So it's becoming very common and it's, uh, as I say, the EPR rubber is the preferred rubber for that.